Hello and welcome back. It's been a minute and we have a lot to go over. Before going into the devlog though, I'm going to give a small explanation as to why I've been absent for the better part of two months. Following the complete overhaul to the terrain and foliage generation, I hit some very serious burnout in December. The entire month and then the lion's share of January were lost due to this. During that time, I did my best to just be able to work on my day job, much less develop Herman. I actually had a script entirely focused on this burnout written, but I realized the majority of it was of no use to anyone but me. So to summarize that script, for everyone wanting to make games, this is not an easy thing to do. And you will sometimes have to stop even when you have just completed something awesome. Maybe especially when you have just completed something awesome. Take some time. There is no shame in taking a break. If possible, do so proactively before you have even completely burnt out. Force yourself away from the project and do other things. It's going to feel terrible, but it's the only way to ensure that in a month or two, you're able to come back and actually get some more work done. And a little note here from my wife. Some tips. Get sunlight regularly and set a timer to drink water or stretch regularly while working, even when you don't want to. Do what work you can from outside or in front of a window. Take vitamins. It really helps with making sure you don't burn out. Taking care of your body will take care of your mind, especially when things are hard. Also, make sure you're eating properly. Now for the actual devlog. These last few months, I've been working on four major parts, terrain and atmosphere improvements, optimizing the game for running on a Steam Deck, gameplay, and AI enhancements. I started with a round of optimizations on the foliage and managed to get the entirety of the grass execution on the GPU so that now the only work done on the CPU is updating the reference textures via the terrain generation system. Everything else is handled via GPU, including fresh from culling. This allows me to raise the density and number of grass types while simultaneously gaining performance. Following this, I worked on bringing this functionality over to the larger foliage, which ended up being a little bit different, but I was able to eventually implement Frustrum Calling on the larger objects. And with some gracious help from the members of the Godot contribution community, I was able to sort out some of the visual glitches that that new system caused. Though I still need to sort out the calling of trees that are between the sun and the player, but behind the player's back, which causes some shadow glitches. Ultimately, all these performance gains and optimizations brought the performance up to the point where my desktop, specs in the description, can run the game at a steady 60 to 80 FPS with all the settings at max with SDFGI and SSIL enabled. There are problems with SDFGI which pertains to this use case, so for now I'm not actually using it as the default setting, but I'm hopeful for further improvements to Godot in the future with regards to global illumination. Thanks to these improvements, I was able to push out the render distance of trees and grass to a current maximum of 256 meters, while also adding in more complex imposters to be rendered at a distance, several types of rocks, and several new grass options. I would also be amiss if I didn't mention the improvements to the clouds, weather, and atmospherics, and general vibes. While there's still a long way to go, I feel like I'm starting to land on a solid visual aesthetic. At the urging of a friend, I decided it might be about time to start testing on the lowest spec hardware that I'm planning to release on, the Steam Deck. So I went ahead and purchased the OLED version and have since gotten a build up and running on it. The frame rate was significantly less than ideal, but it forced me to improve pretty much the entire project's performance. Here are a couple of things in no particular order that I had to do to get the project functional on the limited hardware of the Steam Deck. Optimization of the finite state machine AI variant, mostly just limiting the allowed rate of changing states. Optimization of nav mesh usage, specifically being extremely careful on how I sample the nav mesh, not using the function map get the closest point as much as possible, and hard limiting the number of times an AI can repath to once or twice every second. I also limited audio ranges and now have hard limits based on audio categories. I have an audio handler singleton that the majority of one-shot audio clips go through, and to this I added some limits specifically to AI vocals and footsteps. This means that if a lot of AI are nearby, some of their audio will not actually be executed, but it keeps the CPU usage as low as possible for the audio mixing. I also enforced audio ranges, which lets the CPU ignore audio sources that are too far away to be heard. This is very handy for keeping the usage within reason. Finally, I took all of the settings I had been using for optimizations and implemented them into the settings menu. All sorts of settings can be found here now, like max frame rate, render resolution, upscaling and anti-aliasing options, global illumination settings, cloud and foliage detail, and more. All of these together not only allowed me to get the game playable on the Steam Deck, but it also gave me some insight as to what's actually costing me performance. For example, the grass detail is a fair bit heavier to the GPU than trees. You can push out tree detail load range pretty far on the Steam Deck, but pushing out grass load range or density and the frame rate will crash. With all this, I managed to get the game running at a native resolution with FSR anti-aliasing on the Steam Deck at a stable 30 FPS. 
not really ideal, but for right now it's passable. There's still a lot of optimizations to be done, not just for the Steam Deck, but in general. I want to transition all the trees to large chunk-sized imposters handled by a compute shader in the distance. That would cut down on a lot of the imposters currently being rendered, which are not lightweight at all. I would also like to set up another tier of LOD between the high detail trees and the imposters to improve the transition. If I can get those optimizations in, I think I can decrease the overall load of the foliage. I'm not sure by how much or if it'll be enough for the Steam Deck to maintain the 30 FPS mark while increasing the game complexity, but for right now it's the way forward. This is actually the thing that I've most recently been working on. I needed to implement better melee combat to allow an alternative to the ranged combat as it was not ideal for some of my playtesters. During this time I also had to rework the character rig to allow for further iteration. The original rig had some discrepancies between the control rig and the gameplay rig, which I had mostly just swept up to under the rug until this point. So I went ahead and reworked the entire humanoid controller, which was a massive rabbit hole of complexity. But now it is fully functional and more importantly, it can now handle both primary hand weapons, offhand tools and weapons, as well as weapons that take up both hand slots like bows. While this is extremely work in progress, it leaves room for lots of improvements later on down the road, and the stow slots on the body can also be expanded for all sorts of tools and items to be hanging off the player or NPCs. Following this, I was able to implement a proper shield and start work on that gameplay. Right now, all blocks are perfectly absorbing all damage and perfectly reflecting the velocity to the enemy. But in the future, this will be driven by the attributes and skills of your character, combined with a sort of parry system, which will let skilled players get pretty close to a perfect block with proper timing. Thanks to the rework in the rig and the animations, I was also able to implement a very light freeze frame system to emphasize impacts. This combines with a whole bunch of placeholder audio for the AI, resulting in the feeling of fighting being pretty solid. Though right now, if you know what you're doing, you can absolutely destroy most AI using melee, as there's not a lot of cost to using the shield. So I'll be working in basic damage pass through, depending on your skill level and the damage it's mitigating. This of course can be bypassed by just having perfect timing and getting a parry, but that's later on down the road. Lastly, on the AI side of things, I'm sure you've already noticed the new addition to our bestiary. These creatures are internally just being referred to as hunters, but I'll be getting a proper name for them up and running in the future. Right now, they supply a carnivore to our ecosystem. While the herds do not currently move around since I need to implement their hunting patterns, the individuals will engage anything that comes close to their territory extremely aggressively. The hunters also mark a new type of AI. They are functioning within the same loading and culling system as the antelopes, but they are running a finite state machine for their second to second decisions. This is a massive subject in game development, I'll link some resources for them in the description, but the short version is that a finite state machine allows for complex and modular AI, which can have interchangeable parts used between different creatures. This is tempered by a pretty high individual performance cost, which I am currently keeping in check with a system that reduces the update rate of NPCs at distances, with the only time an AI is functioning at real time is within 250 meters of the player. If you want more information on this subject, you can find a pinned comment in my previous video. Someone asked about the AI staging system and how it optimizes based off of distance. I went into a lot more detail there than I go into here. Just because of time constraints in this video, I didn't want to make the video crazy long, so I didn't go into too much detail on any given subject. So if you want any more detail on it, you can find it there. Now the hunters are looking pretty good, but they are lacking a couple important things that I'll need to add before moving on. Firstly, the hunter groups do not migrate. I want them to move from place to place, taking into account other groups of hunters and stalking prey like the player or antelopes, as well as taking into account the last time the group fed. They also need to sleep during the night to approximate a proper life cycle. Speaking of which, I also need to implement that for antelopes. Second, the hunters need functionality for handling close quarters combat. Right now, they entirely attack at range, and while this isn't the worst, the expenditure of energy is not feasible for hunting. They should open with a jump and maybe do several more during combat, but they should not only ever be doing that attack, as when they are hunting antelopes, the move is meant to close the distance rapidly and kill the creature before it has a chance to run. It's not meant as a consistent combat tool. Third, I want the hunters and everything in my game to see themselves is the most important thing. So if they are taking too much damage or others are dying around them, I want them to just bail. They should always put their own survival above all else. Beyond these, I need a round of polishing, a couple missing animations, injury and close quarters combat animations namely, as well as a whole run through of the audio. Right now via the AI group, the individuals are able to talk to one another and I want to tie creature callouts to each command in response. So they have that atmosphere of creatures talking to one another. 
Well, that was quite a lot. If you watched my last video, you'll probably notice the lack of survival mechanics. I tried to implement these and I was genuinely not feeling them, so for now I've shelved them. This doesn't mean I won't ever implement them, I probably will in the future, but I am just going to focus on other things that I find more compelling first. Me and my wife wrote down on a whiteboard a kind of map of a whole bunch of ideas and things we want to be in the game, and then we ranked them. And consistently, NPCs' dialogue and signs of sentient beings in the world were at the top, so following getting melee combat up to the quality I want, I'm going to retask to do that. During that, with any spare time I have, I need to flesh out the items and world assets with proper models, replacing the placeholder items with actual models based on the cultures in the world. I'll also be working on bringing some more varieties to the ecosystem in the form of a couple new creatures, which for now, I'll keep secret. Gotta keep something to myself. For now, I think that's it. As always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all had a wonderful holidays, and I hope you all have a wonderful next month.